Tonight I wanted to show you a few techniques that I kind of learned by myself over the years on how to play instruments on a keyboard. For example, how to reproduce an acoustic guitar or a bass or brass or strings and so forth in a way that doesn't sound too unnatural. And basically the main idea is just to use your ears and um, kind of emulate how the real instrument would, um, would play in the real world. We're going to use a Kurzweil K2500 RS, which is a rec version of the Kurzweil K2500. Let's get to it. Okay, first up is the acoustic guitar on the keyboard. I'm using the steel string guitar patch on the Kurzweil, which is a pretty old patch, but it's still really good. It's from the 90s, but it still sounds great. It's from the K2000. This is it. Now, what I observed over the years is that you want to play like a guitar player would. So you don't want to play like a piano player. For example, a piano player would play block chords, you know, like this. And it doesn't sound like a guitar. It sounds more like, a, you know, a harpsichord, really. plucked strings but it doesn't sound like guitar. You may want to play something like along these lines instead. So this technique, how does it work? Guitar players usually they use the thumb to play the bass notes and the other fingers of their right hand to play uh, the rest of the chords or you know if, if it's finger picking um, also they do that. I replicate this technique, you could do it with using one hand only, you could do something like this. But I found that um, using two hands is better. I usually use my, my left hand to play the thumb, the thumb part, and my right hand to play the, the chords, basically. And I would do it like this. I would play, for a finger-picking style, I would do something like... So basically you emulate a guitar player that does like down 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 or da da do da di da di da dum so forth. And you want to also use the pedal to help you. And uh, you can sound something like this. Then another component that I found is this roll. Check out these chords and it sounds pretty really realistic. How to do that? You have to roll the keyboards. For, you don't want to think like a piano player. For example, for these types of chord, block chords, you on a piano, let's call up a piano patch. You would play something straight like this on a piano, like this. Sounds really nice on a piano. It does not work on an acoustic guitar. It just doesn't sound realistic. It would sound like this. Because 
in the physical world, when uh, when a guitar player strikes the, the strings, it's like a, a gradual thing. You know, there is a little bit of delay between each string being struck. So if you roll it, it sounds a lot more realistic, like this. And then you can alternate strums with finger picking, something like this. That should be enough for the steel string guitar. Let's move on to the next instrument. Next, we can do the banjo, and I'm using the Green Acres patch on uh, the Kurtz valve. And again, it's a very similar technique to the guitar that I'm using. Uh, I'm gonna play it fast first, and then I'm gonna break it down and show you how I do this. So, you know, the banjo, it could be like something like. It's the same concept exactly, I'm just going fast. So if you're just starting out with keyboards, again it's the same thing, the banjo has four strings and you typically use the thumb for the bass notes and the other three for, for the top notes. So to play this little three chords pattern, what I do, I again use my left hand to play the bass note and this hand to play the other three strings and you you can start slowly doing something like this you know something like this you, you don't have to play the same notes I'm playing of course you can play any notes you want but for this exercise this is what I did Something like that. Yeah, I'm playing very simple chords. I'm playing, you know, the C, the F, and then the C again, and then the D, and then the G. These are simple chords. And but when you do it fast, you have to pick up the speed basically and emulate what a banjo player would sound like. You know, it's not going to be 100%. This is not a science. I'm just going by by ear, but it kind of sounds similar. So you know, you would start like slowly like that. pick up this, the, the pace The next one we're going to talk about is the orchestral strings and I'm using the stereo slow strings patch on the Kurzweil and again it's more of the same you want to try to remember what strings sound like when you hear an orchestra 
and you know basically again you want to avoid playing like a piano player like a keyboard player you don't want to play like a lot of you know like 10 notes you know huge chords like this you know because it's gonna sound like a synth pad not like a real orchestra a string orchestra I've always read that to emulate strings you should think about lines in you know strings lines that carry you know three notes or four notes at max and you can double them in the bass to emulate you know the the, the cellos and and the basses but you want to think along these lines instead. Let's try something like this. I'm just playing groups of uh, three or four notes at, at max and uh, it sounds more realistic this way and I'm also using uh, you know ritardando and also some um, suspended chord it's always good to do a suspended chord like to create tension and resolve it something like, like if you want to resolve from um, a D chord on the strings you know you want to you may want to put something like a G in there and resolve it later to create tension, something like Okay, next up is the choir and uh, when I think of choirs I always um, think about assigning the male component which is lower in pitch uh, usually on the left hand and the female component on the right hand the right hand and again it's a very similar technique that I use for the strings as well with simple chords of um, you know really two or three notes and so I would have on the left hand I would have the male vocal something like this And on the right hand I would have And then again you would do ritardandos and um, suspensions and something along these lines I would play
All right, let's take a look at the flutes, and I'm using the Wendy's flute patch on the Kurzweil. And um, again, to emulate the flute, I try to think as myself as a flute player. And this patch is actually set in polyphonic mode, which is useful if you want to play polyphonic flute passages such as, you know, like... But usually, most of the time, the flute is a monophonic instrument, so we might want to go in and um, edit this patch to set it to monophonic. So we go to the common here, monophonic is off, turn it on, and now it's monophonic. And it's got portamento on, let's turn the portamento off. So now the patch is monophonic, and again, you want to try to basically use your ears, guys. Use your ears to try to sound like a flute player would. Think of yourself as a flute player, so I would do something like maybe... Remember, let's remember that uh, flute players need to breathe, so you've got to stop every now and then to breathe. Okay, we can do the saxophone, and again, we want to try to sound in the same range of the saxophone. I'm using the soft tenor sax for this patch on the Kurzweil, and I'm just going to play the Pink Panther, is that something that everybody knows? I would do something, and it's important to use the pitch band, and if your keyboard has it, um, the after touch to, to introduce vibrato, or basically the better the sample. You know, these, these samples are from the 90s, really. They're, they're super good. Kurzweil did an amazing job. But, you know, nowadays with the modern plugins, you have even better sounds. So let's take a look. We'll be doing something like acting on, on the pitch band wheel as well, and the modulation, and the after touch. And basically in this patch I'm using the aftertouch to control the volume. When I press harder, there's more volume, just like a real sax players would. And then you could play bebop. For that, it's you could use the same rules that are valid for a piano player because you know, in reality like bebop jazz you know they do want to copy the brass and the reeds because they want it to sound like that something like jazzy lines you know. <laughs> same type of sound that you would do on the piano or something like um you could replicate that on the sax because pretty much the same concept. Trumpet. I'm using the Miles Unmuted 
sound, which is, goes like this. And again, this is programmed in polyphonic mode. Let's set it to monophonic because the trumpet is. Edit. Common. Turn monophonic on. And let's leave legato. It's got legato on. So. Again, as a trumpet player, you want to try to emulate what a trumpet player would do. And it's good to have legato because you can do the legato stuff like the, the trumpet does, something like the trills. So you could play something like... And again, you can use the aftertouch to introduce the LFO, the vibrato, and or the volume and uh, do the phrasing that sounds like a trumpet, jazzy or pop, whatever you want. And you can do these elephant things like the trumpet players do. All right, here's the harp, and here's one really easy way that anybody can do it to play the harp, and it's the typical. If you want to do a little bit more than that, you know, when I in the '90s uh, there was a, when I came to America there was a show on TV where this guy was selling keyboards and I he was playing the harp sound on these <laughs> Casio keyboards back in the '90s. I don't remember his name, but I kind of copy what he was doing. He was playing these chords here. And when you press the pedal, it does sound like a harp. You can play this chord in any key if you want, but it's kind of... So I play these notes here. And you can find the relation in, in every key. Also an interesting thing, uh, when I was a child, uh, you know, harp, what a lot of times uh, harp players, what do they play? arpeggios. Why? Because <laughs> the Italian word for harp is arpa, hence the word Italian word arpeggio. Eh? <laughs> That's how it goes. Uh, basically an arpeggio is the act of playing the arpa, the harp. And when I was a kid uh, in, in the Italian TV there was, you know, everybody of my generation who is listening to this will recognize this because it was the interval of the Rai TV back in the 70s went something like this. Which is really a, a piece by Handel. And um, I loved this piece when I was a child and I always try to replicate it playing arpeggios. Okay, 
next is a marimba patch on uh, the Kurzweil 2K2500 and the marimba for what I've observed over the years the marimba players use two or four um, four what do you call them uh, sticks <laughs> I don't even know what they're mallets I guess on the marimba and uh, to create trails and and to do that on the keyboard I usually basically use two fingers it's really easy to do if you have two mallets you can do something like this or you can use the, the thumb and the index finger whichever fingers work for you oh Roger. That's an internal nanolon joke. Or you can do four. Do the same thing with four fingers. Just play like this. Or you can play jazz it. Let's do one more, the bass, the electric bass, and um, it's cool to have a patch like this dual e-bass on the Kurzweil that basically at normal velocity it plays the, the finger bass and um, if you play harder there is a velocity switch that engages the slap, the pop sound, such as this. So you could play like a bass player would, something like... Alright guys, that's it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed the content and if there is anything you'd like to see, just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to, to do a video about it. As usual, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you the next time.